Hello, everybody. Tracy, Mrs. J Dog Flanagan with you here today. I'm the co founder and senior vice president at J Dog Brands. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast. Sponsored by the J-Dog Foundation, our podcast gives veterans, male spouses, active duty members, military family members, and patriotic military supporters a voice in the veteran space to speak about their service, how they're affecting their communities post-service, and they share with me a tactical treasure that has helped them in their journey in their military career business or life. Today, I'm so pleased to have with me Michelle Lang. Michelle is a proud Army male spouse and mom of three boys and the founder of Operation Honor Royal Salute, a nonprofit focused on serving royal veterans. She started this venture after her family had difficulty finding the right resources to support them when they needed help the most. Michelle has been on a journey to seek and create community wherever she's at. She loves sharing her stories so others might feel less alone, more seen, and empowered to take their own steps towards greatness. Hello, Michelle. Thanks for joining me today. And thank you so much for your service and your husband's service to our country. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited. We have a lot to talk about, but I would like to start with, you're an Army male spouse. I would love to know how you met your husband. We met online technically. Um, <laughs> he was, he happened to be, so he was living in Fort Drum and I went to college in the same town that he's from. So okay. we met while he was home on block leave. And then we were like inseparable for like the two weeks that he was home on oh. block leave. Um, and the rest kind of history, like we, we had a terrible first date. Honestly, it was awful. It was, <laughs> oh no. It was so bad. Um, but it was really kind of like the the prequel to our relationship. Like it it involved us meeting in a dive bar, him helping a veteran who, you know, was going through some some issues. He, he right. was former EOD and I had no idea about this world. And so I'm just sitting there uh, oh watching a UFC God. fight and it was women fighting and I hate watching women UFC fights. Right. Um, so I was just like, Oh my gosh. Like I can usually talk to anybody, but I was, I was on my own there. So, um, <laughs> oh, <that's> no. a... <laughs> that does sound like a little bit of disaster. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he has a really, really good heart and ever, anytime we're out, I mean, his specialty is five minute friends. Like he yeah. is, if we're out, he's making friends with somebody and they'll, he'll get them to tell their life story and, and, you know, give advice or whatever. Like he just, he has a really good heart. Yeah. So you, so you <laughs> met him while he was in the military, had no idea what this was all about. Um, so what was military life like for you when you guys finally got married? Um, I did not like it at all because um. I had to, so after eight months of dating, I quit my job and I moved up North with him and that looked like me. I, I had a conversation with our CEO at the hospital uh, at the time I was working at my direct boss um, and myself. And he was, you know, offering me a very big position for a 23 year old. I was going to be in charge of running the health and wellness center. Um, oh, wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. And I knew I had to tell him. So I walked out of that meeting. He went into his office. I stood outside his office. I took a couple of deep breaths and I said, Jason, I've got to talk to you. And he was like, oh no. I said, I'm moving in with my my boyfriend uh, to Fort Drum. I'm not going to be here in a year. And he's like, well, you know, thank you for telling me. But after that, when I moved up there, I couldn't get meaningful employment. So I went right. from, you know, a, a pretty nice position for a, a young 23-year-old to having to work at Zales, which is not my jam, uh, right. retail. That's not, that's not my thing. Um, and it was just a struggle. So I, I, my, our beginning of our relationship was just like getting past resentfulness really. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well that, that's, that's difficult. And I've, and uh, you know, our male spouses, you included, uh, you guys give up so much. You really do. You sacrifice, uh, you know, for your service member to be there to support them and encourage them. And a lot of times that means giving up 
great jobs, career paths, everything. So I, uh, I'm wondering, when did you kind of settle in and decide, okay, you know, I'm okay with this. I'm, I've accepted this life, you know, our, the marriage is good. Your relationship is good. Life is, you know, okay. Probably Oops. recently, to be honest. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, no, but it, it took a lot for me because I never envisioned, number one, I never envisioned having kids. Um, and I met him and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to have, I want to have kids with you. He's such a great, yeah, I knew he was going to be a great dad. So then I was, you know, working a job that was not fulfilling, um, while feeling like I'm a totally inadequate mom is struggle to find childcare. So you're, you're constantly struggling in that. So mm, right. that was me having a lot of conversations with my sisters, with other people. I was like, how do I be okay with this thing of just being a mom? And that I'm, I'm not, I'm not diminishing that. I, I have a very different attitude towards that now, but that's not what I saw for myself. And I was wondering sure. how I be okay with that because I felt like I had a calling inside of me that was to give more to the world than, um, you know, just this one aspect of my life. Right. And so um, I settled into that and I really put my focus on what that looks like being that type of mom, um, <clears throat> working at a job. How do I, how do I do that? That's not fulfilling. Um, and it was just a means to an end. So really what I learned is, is happiness is what you make of it. Um, right. True. And it's just, it's part of the journey and you just kind of have to walk that journey to figure out where you, where you want to be. Like my husband and I always say like, we, we don't know what we want to be when we grow up. Like right. <laughs> it is so we're in our, he's in late thirties. I'm early thirties. And it's like, there's a lot of life ahead of us. Sure. Um, sure. So recognizing that this is just all very much part of a, a journey and we are just trying to put good back into the world while, while we're here and while we can. Right. Right. So thus probably how you came about with um, Operation Honor Royal Salute, right? Did um, it, it sounds like this is a great segue to kind of talk about that, to, to kind of come up with a way to uh, give back and, and do that other call, possibly the calling that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where I really feel like I found my groove. Um, I, I love doing something that's bigger than myself. Like I love mm -hmm. being able to have the potential to impact a, a nation. Like that is incredible to me. And I'm so excited for the families that um, we're going to be able to help with this. But the rural community is really, really important to me. That's where I grew up. It is usually left out of conversations mm. um, in, yeah. in Washington, D.C. They're not, not thinking about rural America. But we used to be the the cornerstone of America. That's what America was built on. And um, I would like to get back to that. I would like to see rural America flourish again through these veterans and their families. So that's that's our mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when did you come up with this idea? Like how, how did, uh, you know, Operation Honor Royal Salute come about? So I started my nonprofit in 2021 and at the time I started it under veteran help point. And mm -hmm. that was because my husband and I had trouble when he got out of the military the first time, we couldn't find him the resources that he needed. And there are some very unfortunate circumstances that led us to not being able to find resources. Um, and that led to really disastrous effect for our family. Sure. So I started talking to other people about it. it. turns out it's like a really common thing. Had no idea because the spouses are not brief during SFL tap. Um, we're left in the dark. So, and I mean, the mental aspect is just, that's still taboo. That's not really talked about yet. So mm -hmm. I didn't want other people to struggle finding resources in these smaller communities like we did. Because I know there's 44,000 veteran nonprofits out there. Wow. But, I mean, you've got to be able to find something, right? So right. I wanted to 
put together this database that would be really robust of all these resources that people could just, you know, reach out to and and get connected with no matter where they are in the country. And this year, whenever we put on our Operation Honor event, what I realized is that the whole time, the, the target audience that I was really trying to serve was rural veterans. Mm -hmm. And so we just made the switch to, I mean, laser in focus on rural veterans and their families. How can we get them the resources they need? How can we get them the support, the community they need? How can we get them the meaningful employment they need? Um, because what we found is if you present them the resources, they go after it and they take it. Right. So, right. I, I mean, they're not not willing to do the work. They just feel like people don't care. Right. Sure. So, so you say that, um, so I know you have a website. So, um, so Operation Honor Royal Salute is a, about a, a database with numerous resources but you have events too, right? Um, can mm -hmm. you talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, if, if, if I'm a, my, it, like just me, for instance, if my husband and I are in rural America and he's serving and I'm at home and, you know, or he is getting out, how can he access your platform for resources and assistance? Yeah. So there's sort of four pillars to what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So the first pillar is the virtual resources. So these are resources that can serve anybody, no matter where you live, um, with the objective being they definitely can serve rural America because they are solely virtual. Um, and with that, we have a smaller database of resources. So I call it like, it's like our team of Avengers. Um, that, that's what <laughs> okay. I, I'm a boy mom. So we have uh, right, our I team love of Avenger, Avengers here that they're going to be able to serve you. We have, um, we're doing our database a little bit differently. So we actually have these resources, create videos, um, explaining who they are, how they serve rural veterans and where the veteran can go to get served by them. So okay. there's already that rapport being built between the company and kind of humanizing the company a little bit. Okay. And then anybody can access that. Then there's the community portion. So that is the portion where you need to log in, um, create an account, and there you can have a general forum um, and you can get dispersed into groups. So if you're interested in veteran finance, if you're interested in real estate and VA loans, fitness, millennial veterans. So we have these different categories. Homesteading is another category that are interests of rural veterans, um, where they can talk to each other and they can talk to a subject matter expert right there. Okay. Um, wow. And then within there, there's an employment piece. So that's where we have a subject matter expert that will be talking about resume writing tips, translating t from, you know, military to civilian. And then also we have a job board. So we have a company in there that is, um, up and down the East coast and they'll have jobs posted you know, ready to go. So you have access to an employer. And then the other side of that is how do we get more people meaningful employment in rural America? So we're kind of working on a pilot program for that right now. And then our fourth pillar is in-person operation honor events. Okay. Oh, wow. So the in-person operation honor events, are they, <laughs> do they take place across the country or are they in one certain royal portion of the country? Uh, last year, our first one was in Pennsylvania. So we're doing okay. that again in Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm in North Carolina. I want to duplicate this in North Carolina. My long-term goal is to have one of these events in every 50 states happening the same weekend across the country. That's my oh. long-term goal. Wow. That's really... Uh, I love it. That's Hello, really amazing. viewers and listeners. Are you a military veteran or a military family member and looking to own your own business? If so, go to jdog.com and check out our two veteran focused franchises, jdog junk removal and hauling and jdog carpet cleaning and floor care. Our franchisees nationwide are always looking to hire fellow veterans and patriots. 
JDOG is the world's largest military franchise system with hundreds of locations nationwide. We are nearly 90% better known with the goal of reducing the veteran unemployment rate to under 1%. Check us out. Go to JDOG.com to learn more. Now, back to the podcast. So um, I imagine that um, all of this, the community events and um, access to the job boards and employment, it, I, I, is that free for veterans? Everything's free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got, got it. And so I, I guess you function on um, grants, donations, and what about, I'll just use our J dogs for instance, they're always looking for veterans to work in their J dog business. If I put operation on a Royal salute out there as, Hey guys, look, um, here's another way that you can possibly, uh, get veterans to work in your J dog business. And, and they wanted to post something on a job board or, you know, be an employer, how would they go about that? So is there, so obviously there's a cost for the company, right? Right now, no, the only, the, oh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're working on a pilot program. So right now this is, this is all free to everybody. I mean, we're, we're okay. really um, testing the limits of what we can do. We, I know this is going to be beneficial for companies and for veterans. And oh, sure. Yeah. When you have meaningful employment, your mental health is, I mean, that's directly tied. So yeah. right now we're in the, the beta stage. October 1st is technically when it launches for us. Okay. And then it. starting January, that's whenever we're like full scale, we're, we're going after it and it's no longer invite only. Everybody is welcome. Okay. Um, so we're, we're trying to work out the, the kinks before then, but it is, it's really easy to see how everything flows into each other very well. Um, sure, and sure. that is an opportunity because veterans, I think somebody told me the other day after world war II, um, veterans actually had the highest number of patents in the United States because they're just natural entrepreneurs. They're natural yes. inventors. And so you know, that's I, another think I, thing. I think I heard that as well. Um, there, there was a, a, a big boom um, after World War II. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and so, but yeah. there's not many entrepreneurial resources sure. in rural America, but mm -hmm. the, I mean, technically there are, I'm using one right now. It's Victor Valak. Like you can be, you can use that anywhere. Um, right. There's Bunker Labs. There's the Rosie Network. There's so many things yeah. that veterans and military spouses can use in rural America to enhance the business they already have, empower them to start the business, mm -hmm. to um, give them that support to start, you know, a franchise. Like there's a lot that people can yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And if you don't have an idea, you can always join a franchise system like J-Dog. <laughs> yes. Just yeah. <laughs> true. Um, Okay. So I also read on your website that you're doing a podcast, 50 stories, 50 states, 50 days. Talk to me about that. Have you started that yet? And what does that look like? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've lined up some people. Um, so it's, it's a little bit easier than I thought to get some of the people just I've been talking to people for the past three years. And I've had the opportunity to meet some really awesome people. So yeah. We're going to start recording here in October and launch that the first of the year. So that way there's 50 episodes ready to go for everybody. And the goal is one veteran from every state, tell their story, um, what it's like living in rural America, why it's so special and what some challenges are, because a lot of people are not, they're not either aware of right. what goes on or even, you know, some people think like if you have a track, I mean, it is, it is wild what some people think about rural America, but, um, you know, just trying to give a different perspective and maybe encourage some of these people that are living in rural America to, you know, start the thing they've wanted to start to reach out to other resources, you know, and just mm -hmm. have a community. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I think that 
that's really amazing. So I'll, I'll love to keep track of that podcast. That'll be really neat. Now we come to the point where I have to ask you, what is your tactical treasure, Michelle? What are you going to share with us today? You know, I was, I was thinking about this since the, the last time we spoke and, and the thing that kept popping up in my head that has really guided me through my military spouse journey and this entrepreneurial journey is knowing the difference and knowing when to either lean in or lean on. So when I was younger, I was, you know, I was all about Sheryl Sandberg and we're leaning into conversations. You know, I went to my boss and I asked for raises and I got a raise and that was nice. But, um, <laughs> you know, sometimes all you have to do is ask. Right. But there, there is a time whenever you need to lean into problems and you need to, you know, put your head down and solve them. But there's times whenever you need to learn to lean on other people or lean on resources and in, into your community and mm -hmm. um, be okay with that. Be okay with letting people help with getting guidance and support because our bodies need rest. And I'm learning this right now. Like I, I got really, really sick a couple weeks ago because I was working and worrying like crazy. And I, I did not take my own advice. I was leaning in way too much. Right. Um, but it is, it makes you a more productive person. It makes you a happier human being, wife, spouse, uh, you know, mom, coworker, whatever to lean on people sometimes. And people like to be leaned on. That's, that's part of the human experience is helping each other. Right. Right. I love that. That's a great tactical treasure and a great piece of advice too. Um, yeah. And I think, I don't know. I, I, obviously male spouses, of course, and, you know, business women too. We just, we think we're, you know, we put on the cape, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we wear so many hats, right? We're a mom, we're an entrepreneur, we're uh, like, in your case, you're a male spouse, you're in so many hats that you wear, you put on that cape and you think you're superwoman and you think you have to do it all. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know, it's okay to, reach out to people and look at who's in your circle and who can actually help you, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's great advice. So would you have like another p little nugget for, you know, I, I, in your case, I'm going to say fellow male spouses that are maybe in this military life and, and have struggled the way you have to kind of, um, reconcile, um, the sacrifices and the changes and to be okay with it. Um, you've shared a lot about your process and I, I really appreciate, you know, your vulnerability, um, cause you never know who may be listening and, and may, you know, garner, you know, some, um, nuggets from your story and inspiration from your story, but, would you have another piece of advice? Take advantage of all of the free resources that are available to you. So, I mean, if people don't know, if there's a program for active duty military or veterans, they most likely serve military spouses. And it, it just might not be advertised as well because their, their main market is, is the veteran, right? So things like Act Now Education, um, boots to books, you can go and you can get free certificates um, through, you know, your comp C, your, your security plus certificates like this, that big companies want to see you have, and then you can go get a virtual job. And not only that, but these companies like Act Now Education, Boots to Books, they have virtual hiring fairs. Okay. So you can get your certificate, you can go online, and then you can get hired at a hiring fair. So it, there are so many more opportunities now for people mm. to have meaningful. I mean, even if it doesn't mean a lot to you, that paycheck means something to you and it, sure. it means something yeah. to a lot of people, yeah. um, especially with groceries. I'm telling you what, three boys is killing me, but oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's, there are a ton of free educational resources that will add immense value to your portfolio accounting. That's another one that this country is in desperate need of accountants 
and I had a conversation with somebody who is actually doing this. He's providing um, accounting education for military spouses to hire accountants because they're in, it's, it's, we're in rough shape. We need accountants. Right. Wow. Um, so there, there are so many things. And if anybody needs help getting pointed in a direction, absolutely reach out to me. I will hook you up with the resources. I'll send you where you need to go because there is a ton of opportunity out there. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I've had um, recently a couple, uh, another mill spouse on that talked about um, getting involved with a spouse's club. You know, most, um, if you're near a base, um, a lot of them have spouse's club that are general spouse's club, or some of them are you know, and by enlisted or officer or whatever, but, you know, even if, you know, you, you, you know, you're not interested in, um, employment, but, you know, being able to be plugged in and, and, you know, be involved in the community in that way, I think, mm -hmm. uh, can be very beneficial, you know, just mm -hmm. for keeping you sane, mental health, helping you feel, you know, like you're doing something very purposeful and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid to get outside of the military community either. Like yeah. there's one of my favorite experiences was working at a gym, um, up in Watertown where I got to, I, I started there working out and I liked it so much. I went and became a trainer, um, did less mills classes, but I made some really, really great friends with the community up there. Um, down here we have, uh, I mean, we have phenomenal spouse organizations down here. If people are not interested in spouse clubs, because some people they have, that's not their, <laughs> excuse me. That's not their thing. Right. Um, yeah. We have like a Fayetteville book club. We have a Fayetteville girl gang where they go and they work out together or they do, yeah. you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, my friend is starting like a, a female entrepreneur, uh, so like community group. So there's all the, if you look on Instagram, just type in your location and, and what you're interested in. Accounts are going to pop up right, right. Um, for you to check out too. Yeah, that's great advice. I love it. Before you go, um, obviously, I want to know how people can find and connect with you. But um, it sounds like your website, Operation Honor Royal Salute, is kind of a one-stop shop. Is that where they would go? Um, and once they go there, uh, how would they you know, either get tapped into the resources and that sort of thing. So you'll go there right now. We have our old map up that will be all switched. Um, as soon as we get the rest of our videos uploaded, I mean, you're going to go to oh rural salute.org and then you'll be able to pull up the page of resources and then you'll be able to create an account, log into the community, join whichever interest groups you want to be a part of, um, and then from there, you'll be able to see like the employment board and um, all of that, get on our newsletter for any events. So pretty much it's all going to be there. Um, other additional tips we give on Instagram, um, our Facebook, LinkedIn, those are our three main platforms. Okay. And um, can people donate on your website if people are interested in um, giving a donation? Yep. That's all on there. We have it. Um, it is technically sponsoring a veteran. So you can pay X amount of dollars to be able to sponsor help for a veteran for a year or a month, whichever, uh, you feel, but yeah, we, we kind of have that cost broken down to help, you know, really reach as many people as we can. Right. Right. Okay. That's great. Um, great information. Um, Michelle, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for your time and coming on. And thank you so much too, for sharing all that you did. I really appreciate you and your story. It's really amazing. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Hello, viewers and listeners. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Tactical Treasures Podcast. We've just finished up an amazing conversation with Michelle Lang, who is an Army male spouse and founder of Operation Honor Royal Salute. 
Operation Honor Royal Salute connects royal veterans, their families, and their caregivers to vital resources, helping them build strong, supportive communities and offering meaningful employment opportunities. There is no cost to veterans, caregivers, or organizations to be part of Operation Honor Royal Salute. The mission is to ensure that royal veterans have the tools they need to succeed, improve their well-being, and thrive in both their personal and community life. Operation Honor Royal Salute is dedicated to fostering a sense of belonging and providing the opportunities they deserve to create thriving royal communities where veterans are happily employed, mentally well, and deeply connected. By partnering with like-minded organizations, they aim to inspire, empower, and support royal veterans in living fulfilling lives. To learn more, go to ohroyalsalute.org. There you can donate, you can also, if you're a veteran, sign up, create an account, and access the community and the employment job boards. Again, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, you can find Tactical Treasures podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms, as well as Vet TV, American Grit, and our dedicated YouTube channel. We are now airing on Reese Across America Radio on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you missed that, please be sure to join us for the Encore on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. You can also find Reese Across America Radio on the iHeartRadio app, the TuneIn app, and the Odyssey app. We're also proud to share that our JDOC Foundation is a Reese Across America sponsorship group. For each $17 Veterans Wreath that you sponsor, $5 goes directly back to the JDOC Foundation, whose mission is to prevent veteran suicide and heal veterans' mental health and PTSD. You can donate right now at reeseacrossamerica.org slash JDOC. Again, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again on another podcast real soon. Bye-bye now.